I don't want to sit here and refill all my it's Guys, it don't happen again. I met President elect Bishop Bola Ahmed Tunubu, aka Town Hall, is different from Kolabo, Bala Blue. My people, the Agbado Master, my people, not be small saga for how many days now. Tunubu say concerning this uh, election petition, when did they go on for tribunal? So, Tunubu say if the judges not judge this case to favor and for in your favor, he say this matter won't have the for grand. So, he say go cause anarchy for Nigeria. He say go buy everybody when they Nigeria and be like, say, man, they work against them when you not vote for them. My people not be smart, you know. Now, now me, they they fear why I not support Tunubu. For the one because people won't be like say they support them. Tinubu get their list of name. You understand? Tinubu write their name down. <laughs> now understand I mean I don't regret now why I support Peter Opi. When I see what we they try to talk about shame on Una. Shame on Una. Some Nigerians will be like say, man, when I get eyes, when I know they use until they see, when I get ears, when I know they use until they hear. Because all these old things. Now, when I call the motivate APC, I even say, see some lazy youth on your mandate, we shall stand. Tinubu mandate, we shall stand. Me when I call it Tinubu mandate, now me when I stand. Me when I call it Tinubu mandate, now somebody will be like, say, he never ever spend how many months for us to rock. He does the threaten, I want to give him a real happy. Well, me and offer Kukuma de Nigeria. You understand? If you like, he, he come out for street now. He whole gone by itself. If they give people a rap, they go by itself. I know they Nigeria not go affect me. Forget say I get family for Nigeria. Before then, I go even say na Ghana, Ghana near. Uh -huh. They go relocate, go Ghana first. Well, my people, make una watch this video. I be while watching. Make una just help me like, share, and drop on a comment. What go sooner for the next update? Coming out soon. Respect one love, guys. I don't want to sit here and refill all my. It sounds unreal that Tinubu will threaten the tribunal judges to deliver justice in his favor or else there will be anarchy. Did he really say this? The story was reported by many Nigerian newspapers. Let's look at the source of the news. It came from the final address of Tinubu's legal team to the presidential election petition tribunal. After they made their argument on why 25% is not required in Abuja, by the way, they ended up accepting that 25% is mandatory in Abuja. <laughs> but we'll come back to that in a moment. They concluded by saying, with much respect, any other interpretation different from this will lead to absurdity, chaos, anarchy, and alteration of the very intention of the legislator. Our courts have always adopted the purposeful approach to the interpretation of our constitution. This is a new law and it shows how desperate they've become. What message are they sending to the international community? That they will not obey the order of the court when he is eventually sacked? And they expect foreign investors to come to a country where their leaders don't obey the laws? This sounds so much like what a thug will say. Have lawyers become thugs? Or are they just passing the message like their client wanted them to? This is a direct threat to the tribunal judges. And no, nothing will happen. There will be no anarchy if Tinubu is removed from office. Instead, there will be wild jubilations across the country. Millions will troop out to dance and celebrate. Tinubu's declaration was the only time in Nigeria's recent history that people didn't troop out to celebrate. So who will cause the chaos when it's an open secret that he didn't win the election? This is the only election in recent history that Nigerians are sure that the announced winner didn't win the election. In 2015, it was obvious that Buhari won the election, although many underage voters voted for him in the North. Also in 2019. But you see this 2023 presidential election? Tinubu didn't win. That's why the court will sack him and nothing will happen. Some of his supporters are already regretting ever working for him. It wouldn't be a surprise if they join others in celebrating his sack. This is because in just a few weeks, he caused more hardship than Buhari will ever dream of. Not that subsidy removal or reduction shouldn't happen, but you can't triple the cost of fuel and expect workers and business owners not to suffer. Petrol is the live wire of Nigeria's economy. Even in Western countries, if the price of petrol triples without warning, it will seriously cripple their economy. And to add insult to injury, look at this. What a waste. 
40 billion naira just for luxury SUVs for the National Assembly members. When Nigerians are resigning from their jobs because their salaries can no longer pay their transport fares. Transport fares have tripled since the price of petrol went up. These workers have dependents that they take care of. Some of them are living in the cities, some are living in the rural areas. So imagine the effect of the sudden increase in price of fuel on Nigerians. Why do Nigerian politicians specialize in spending money on frivolities, but they can never create wealth in the first place? They said they will spend billions on Naira on palliatives, that they will share 8,000 Naira each to 12 million people. What effect will that have on the economy? Or is this another scheme? More than 50% of this money will never get to the real people. They will never account for the money. Instead of wasting billions, why not use the money to buy thousands of dual fuel buses to ease the transportation costs for workers? That will have more effect on the economy. Compressed natural gas is very cheap, about 150 naira per kg. If these buses run on CNG, it will drastically reduce transportation costs and the buses are manufactured in Nigeria, so it will create more jobs for Nigerians. Increase in salaries should be directed to people that need it most. All military personnel, police, all security agencies, they need to increase their salaries instead of dumping more money on National Assembly members who earn millions of naira already. This is very simple. Why is it so hard for politicians to understand? Coming back to the own goal they scored, after arguing against 25% requirement in Abuja, they concluded that the word and is conjunctive, which is in agreement with the Supreme Court ruling in 2008. Is it that they don't understand the meaning? Because if they agree that it is conjunctive, that means whatever applies to the states must apply to the FCT. That's logical conjunction. We didn't really expect that after arguing against something that they will end up agreeing with it. That's why we didn't spend much time reading the entire 42 pages of their final address. Maybe their lawyers truly believe that it is the correct interpretation. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But you know lawyers will always defend their client. In order to understand why they've become desperate to the level of threatening the tribunal judges, let's appraise their performance so far in court, including their final address. How did they counter all the reliefs sought by the petitioners? Starting with the election itself, the petitioners said that the way INE conducted the presidential election was in gross violation of the Electoral Act and their own guidelines and regulations. To support this claim, the petitioners tendered various INEC certified through copies of results sheets running into thousands. Although INEC didn't deliver all documents they requested, they still brought a substantial number to prove their case. And because INEC gave reasons why the upload of presidential election results sheets didn't work on election day, they tendered evidence from Amazon Web Services, which hosts IREF. The evidence proved that there was no glitch as INEC claimed. And if there was no glitch, it proves that it was an INEC web administrator that blocked or changed polling officers' passwords and generally prevented upload of presidential election results sheets. Labour Party supported all these documents by calling 13 witnesses. On PDP's side, they called more than 20 witnesses. <laughs> Now, how did the defendants counter the evidence submitted by the petitioners? What type of documents did they tender in court to try and convince the judges otherwise? The defendants tendered only one document to support their claim that they deployed patches to mitigate the glitch. They claimed they had the right to collate the results any way they wanted. They cited one court judgment that reinforced that right. So they didn't address the issues raised by the petitioners. They didn't in any way tender documents to try to prove that the manual collation they decided to use for only presidential election was correctly done. That despite not following the law by uploading the results at the polling units, that they made sure that the results reflected what voters voted at the polling unit. They didn't prove any of this. This is the main issue that the petition has proved, but they didn't counter it. They are banking on the fact that he who alleges should prove. But they forgot that if someone makes an allegation against you and tenders evidence to prove the allegation, you have to counter that person to stand a chance. Why will the judges just believe them when the figures in front of them say otherwise? 
they can't just tell the court that despite not uploading the result sheets at the polling units, that it didn't affect the results at the end of the day.